What's going on guys and gals? This is Auto Tech. Today I am going to show you how to remove and install the front tire on an FJ09. Now mine's a 17 so it does have ABS. So I've got the sensor right down here. So the procedure will be just a touch different than it would if you didn't have ABS. This will also apply to the FZ09. I'm not too sure about uh, the Z07 or whatever. So let's get to it. So first thing first, we got to remove this ABS sensor. And it is a four millimeter Allen. So you're going to take that bolt out and then gently work the sensor out. So to get that sensor out, just lightly pull on it. And there you have it. It's got its own little bracket and everything, so that's good. And then uh, we're just going to kind of get that out of the way like that. Do not damage this sensor because it's probably really expensive. So you know what? I'm actually getting a little premature here. If you've taken the sensor out, stop there, set your bike up on a stand, just so you know, the Vortex front stand doesn't uh, lift the bike enough that you can clear the ground. So in order to get that free spin in, you got to put your stand up on some blocks of wood or you have a stand that works. <laughs> Next, we're going to take a 12 mil and we're going to remove that caliper. I'm going to have to use two hands and hold that uh, front wheel in place, but it's just these two bolts. Once you get those two bolts out of there, just slide this out of the way. And you're going to have to come slightly up. There we go. Now, oh, there we go. That'll work. I'm probably going to zip tie that there so that it doesn't swing back into the um, rim or anything like that. Once you have your calipers off, even just the one side, do not pull your front brake. Leave your brakes alone. You, you're not, you don't need to use them right now, so don't be an idiot. Okay, so I didn't have full length zip ties, so I had to join two together. There you have it. The sensor's not going to fall into the rim, and the caliper's out of the way. So now we're going to go to the other side. Same deal on this side. You're going to remove those two 12 millimeter bolts, and I'm going to have to hold the rim from turning. So once you get those out, just kind of work that caliper and you'll have to lift up a little bit and there we go. So again, I'm going to zip tie this to there. Ta-da, nicely secured. Remember not to push your brakes now. Now you're going to take a six millimeter Allen and I can guarantee I'm going to have to, oh no, maybe not. There we go. So you can actually loosen that without having to um, hold the front wheel. So six millimeter Allen, loosen the pinch bolt. Now you're gonna take a 14 millimeter Allen and you're going to loosen this out. Now, this is gonna be a two-handed job because once you get this out far enough, you're going to slide that out, keeping track of where these spacers go you got one on each side and then the wheel's gonna drop. So use two hands and uh, just kind of catch everything. Okay, so these spacers actually sit right in the rim, so that's kind of nice. If you look closely, you can see that there's a little machined lip, like a machine, couple, two machine lines. That's what's gonna be going in there. So remember that for reinstallation. So I'm gonna put those with the machined lips down. Just roll it forward until you're clear of your uh, fender and then you can lift that out of there. And just remember not to let it drop on the face because it will land on one of those rotors. All right, so nice and quick, eh? I'm just kidding. I took it to work and uh, tossed the tire on the rim while I was there. So now we're going to get ready to reinstall this. So what we're going to do is we're going to slide this up under that fender there. Remember that your ABS goes on the right side of the bike. So if you're at the front of the bike, your ABS ring will be on the left. We're going to take our spacers 
and remember that machined line goes towards the inside. Put a little smear of uh, brake caliper lubricant on there. And then, I should have held this with the other hand. We're gonna pop that in there. Lasso. Do the same thing for the other side. All right, washer lubed up and stuffed in there. That's what she said. Both sides. Take this opportunity and put a little uh, anti-seize on your shaft there. It's a good time to do it. And, um, you know, it's just it's preventative maintenance down the line so that you don't ever have to worry about this seizing in there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have my 14 millimeter Allen already in it so that I don't have to hold on to this smooth surface. I've got something that I can actually grip and turn as I need to. I'm not going to be able to do this with one hand. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to roll the tire into the place where it needs to go. So a little bit further back and then uh, hook your front toe underneath it. And then you'll be able to lift that up in there and slide the shaft through. But once you get that started, you're going to go ahead and just keep winding this in and slightly touch it down. The torque on that wheel axle is 47 foot pounds. So there you go. So just because I am a paranoid guy, <laughs> I took that pinch bolt right out, which is a six millimeter Allen, put a little dab of blue on there, and then we're going to torque that to 17 foot pounds. So we torque that to 17 foot pounds right there. Perfect. Now we're going to cut and remove the zip tie holding the brake caliper. I'm gonna do the left one first just because I'm feeling lazy and don't feel like dealing with the ABS wire right now. Now the trick to popping this back on is just a little bit of time and patience. You wanna make sure that these pads are spread as far as they're gonna go and then you're gonna slowly slip it up the rotor. So just like that, you kinda of get it slid up there and then you've got those little locating dowels to uh, seat the caliper in there. You'll never guess what happens next, but we put a little dab of blue on those caliper bolts and then uh, we go ahead and thread those in there. Oh, that's just magical. All right, take your 12 mil and just touch those down. The torque on those two caliper bolts is 25 foot pounds. Right there, and then this one. And I couldn't avoid this side forever, so let's go ahead, cut that caliper free, and then um, what we're going to do is make sure those pads are separated, hold this out of the way, and carefully slide that rotor back on, or not rotor, the caliper onto the rotor. All right, like so. And then um, we are going to put a little bit of blue on the bolts, and Thread those in and touch them down. Torque those two brake caliper bolts to 25 foot-pounds. Just to prevent this ever getting stuck in there, I'm going to put a little bit of uh, brake caliper lubricant just around the base where it inserts into the uh, spindle there. And just in case you forgot, this bracket goes behind the sensor. So it'll slide in just like that. A little dab of blue on that bolt. And then we're going to thread that in. Torque that bolt to a four foot pounds. And that's all that it needs. It's uh, really not, like it's not big or anything like that. So if you don't have a torque wrench and you're just doing it by hand, if you remember when you took it out, there really wasn't a whole lot of torque on it. Like you can see, like I'm not really pushing that much. So don't crank that down and snap that off. You'll have a really bad time if you do. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, a nicely installed front tire. Nothing to it. I like to uh, make sure that that front brake's working, and it appears to be so perfect. Right on. Okay, so why should you remove your own front tire? You're not doing the tire yourself, so why not just let them handle it? They're the professionals. Well, you can save yourself a ton of money if you take the tire off yourself. A lot of the times they're gonna charge you an hour or more just to remove the tire, and then they're gonna charge you 40 to 60 bucks to change over the tire. So if you take the tire off yourself, 
and then you take it in, you're going to save yourself a ton of money by doing that. And then you know everything has been torqued, everything has been lubricated properly, you're not going to have to worry about shoddy workmanship, and that just saves you a whole ton of a headache. If you don't want to deal with the hassle, you don't want to have to buy a front stand, nothing wrong with that. You can take it into a trusted shop and they'll do it for you and they'll gladly take your money. But, you know, hopefully this video shows you just how easy it is to remove this and reinstall it. So let me know if you have any questions down below. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Let me know if they, I missed something that could have been way easier. If there's a certain technique that you have that you always do it. I'm always open to learning and figuring out new things. Thanks for taking the time and watching.